Now, technical details about such algorithms as uh, DQN, double DQN, Apex, and Rainbow. You can use DQN, double DQN, and Apex right from the Ray RLLib. Rainbow is nothing else than a set of successful hyperparameters and uh, improvements of uh, DQN. Let's start from DQN. And there were two generations of DQN. The first one was one network. DQN is a neural network that fits Q values. And Q values are expected future rewards in some particular state taking some particular action or values of states for state action values. Originally, if we talk about uh, Q learning, it has the form of a Q table where in one column you have a state action pairs. State action pairs is if I will be in state like this and I will take this action, then I will get this reward. If I make this action, I will get that reward. And for every combination of states and actions, we have value. Here we start with empty table and we are trying to feed it. This was original method. Then this table was substituted with a neural network. And neural network, rather than remembering values for each state action pairs, it fits them. The result of this is knowledge can be extrapolated to unknown state action pairs Having what we've learned, a neural network can predict for some unknown new states or new actions that were not explored originally. This is good. This is, gives the agent more flexibility. So instead of uh, writing everything into a huge table, we have a neural network where we put state and it returns us value for every state and every action. It's called deep Q learning. Now, uh, how it works. Remember I told you about this Q network. It's a neural network. It has some structure. It has layers like dense layers and everything that you saw before. It has two copies. The first copy is in training. Another network is for um, value evaluation. The trick is that they are training and evaluating simultaneously. We're using actually the same network to learn and for inference. This is a Bellman equation. I advise you to read more about topic in different books. These are like well-known concepts. They are 50 years old. Here we see how the Q values are computed recursively for all possible future states. So being in a state S, agent thinks forward like, okay, if I'm going to be here, then I will get this kind of a reward. If I will be there, I will get this amount of a reward and then it does it for every point until the end of episode or by this hyperparameter gamma decay it limits the side of aging and then we use the same policy see the max q s of a which are we training this is immediate reward and this is the discounted sum of all future rewards and here how we compute what value will be for the next state these are used to select best actions and evaluate consequences of actions uh, of course you will say hey that's not effective because actually we are using the same network to to train and to evaluate right if we made any mistake in step it will add up in future because our evaluation network will go the same crazy as our training network and this is why this algorithm is a bit unstable but this is the first and simple dqn algorithm see it has one network for training and evaluation of actions and during training we update their weights another concept that we have to talk about today is experience replay i showed it briefly to you as this buffer remember we were writing inside past states actions rewards and new state tuples also with optional end of episode indicator why we need it first we have a batch of experience think of it as a responses of our environment and then we do q learning here we pass action to the environments and then we're getting new tuples of past states action rewards and new states it becomes a buffer of actions and then we just sample from this buffer trying to train not only on the live environment but also on this replay buffer a replaying past experience trying to make better actions on them and there are prioritized and non-prioritized experience replay here you can see prioritized the fifth entry of every tuple will be written here p it's a probability that this tuple will be chosen for training 
the larger p, the more chance that this sample will be chosen and p is assigned using a temporal difference algorithm. I will talk about it later. Here you can see how we add entries to experience replay memory and how we use them. Let's check the algorithm. If our memory, if size of this buffer is too small, we're just adding samples until it grows to a sufficient size that is given in our configuration. Then we pick a random sample. Given the batch size, give me 200 of random samples from memory to train. Then we get a state. Next state we fill with zeros. Then we iterate over each sample. See, we take every sample from this mini batch by index and then append actions reward next states and done into flat structure to pass to the model. See, then we pass past experience to our model. We use C model to predict and we pass the state with, that we took out of our replay memory. And now we are trying to predict the next target. In case of standard DQN, see, we compute a new value for a known tuple pair, which is written in our replay buffer and then update this pair. So for the known state action, and new state, we update this reward and we update its priority. If reward became larger, then the priority also became larger because we wanted to repeat successful actions that are more informative and give more information for training. Here is the code for uh, training one network DQN with experience replay. We instantiate environment here, pick initial observation, and then we iterate until done, until the end of epsilon. Epsilon is a coefficient for exploration. Epsilon is a chance to take random action instead of predicted action to explore the space of actions and states more. We are writing down the observation into previous observation because now we wanted to make step. Then we rewrite observation with environment step. We predicted action, use our agent. We pass this action to the environment, predicted new observation, reward and done. And then see, we're adding this experience new to the buffer. After the buffer is full, we can train the agent on this knowledge. Once in a while, we update target network with weights of our training network. So we update these weights once in a while. Train this algorithm that predicts best action for 50 epochs. And after 50 epochs, we take these weights and update target network with weights. Their architecture is the same. Target network is used to evaluate actions. 